Hi guys, welcome back to another podcast of Strange Loves with myself, Mark, and... And me, Wendy. The lovely Wendy. What are we talking about today, Wendy? Well, Mark, we've got a really good one this week. A couple of weeks ago... We actually have a good one every week, well, don't we? Do, we? we do. Actually, we have more than one. We do. We, right. we are very good that way. We have very more good. than one. Um, but remember a couple of weeks ago, we had uh, the top five movies of yes. our soundtrack. Yes, We talked about like doing the music... So today we're going to do the music soundtrack. So we talk about songs from a, from a certain era that influence your life, that the soundtrack or, of your life. Yeah, like from 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 to where we are now. Like what bands, what music, what songs, mm-hmm. you know, had a, a big influence on us. Very good one. Yes. Yeah. So so I imagine we're starting off when we were kids. Yes. When's the first time you recognise you got into music or you recognise a song as oh I like that as opposed to just being a kid and just listening to tunes. I think music was always playing at home, always. Mum, mum and dad always had music on. It's weird saying mum and dad like that, because mm. then we're all from there together. But mum was always big into the Beatles, mm-hmm. um, Elvis, yeah. and um, dad was into Dusty Springfield and, and other sort of things like that. Um, so it was always playing, and I grew up with my brother and sister into Slade and Sweet... Oh. And my sister was a massive Bass City Rollers fan. She was going to marry Les McEwen. Um, so I remember hearing, you know... I met him a couple of years ago. Actually. Really? He played at theatre. What's he like? Very nice. My sister, Not with us, died, didn't he, recently? Yeah, yeah, my sister wanted to marry him. She actually threw herself at his car. Claim to fame. Um, so I grew up with it. It was always on. There was always... It's, it's on, darling. It's, it's on. Stick in the, mic- uh, the uh, microphone. Uh, it's on, darling. Yeah, we have no producers or engineers here. It's just us doing it. It's yeah. raw. Yeah, we are going to have a better setup soon. Well, actually, this setup's all right, but we're going to have a proper setup. We're going to have multi-camera angles and that kind of oh, thing. A little studio, camera. yeah. Well, that's yeah. a new one. You haven't put that on me no. yet. you want a bit of a multi-camera? When did you tell me we were going to have multi-cameras? multi-cameras. So we haven't got just one wide shot. We're going to have some close-ups and everything. So. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, yes. Where were we? Where were we, darling? Where were we talking about the multi I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to sort of... You in red is very nice. Thank you, darling. I'm, right. I'm glad you appreciate yeah. I know you like me in red. Um, is that your front door? No, no. 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 Uh, so I grew up. Yeah. I grew up with that sort of, you know, that sort of music. So the first time I really... Oh, this is going to sound so embarrassing. The first time I really got into music was the Osmonds and Lena Zavaroni. Well, at the theatre where I work... Uh, we just had the Osmonds mu- musical. Oh, right. And following the, the musical round was Jay Osmond, okay. who wrote who wrote the story, who's the drummer in the Osmonds, yeah, uh, yeah. who was a really nice guy. What a nice guy. I've met Jimmy before yeah. when he did a solo, uh, one-nighter there. Lovely. Just so for my personal experience of meeting them, absolutely lovely. I actually had a poster of Jimmy in his white yeah. Elvis costume on my wall when I was a child. And it was pride of, I can see it now, pride of place in the middle. And I've, I can't even believe I'm actually admitting to that. But he was on there. Mm. And Lena's Averoni, because mm. um, I used to sing along to Mama, he's making mice at me. And my mum and dad used to say, do it again. Because apparently I was quite good at it. Yeah. And I used to get the old Mama and sing in the hairbrush. Mm. So very, that's very sad. really. Yeah, very sad. It is very sad. Yeah. No, very sad about Lena's Averoni. Oh, oh you yeah. remember my singing? No, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, very, very yeah. sad. And she was. And Karen um, Carpenter, the same sort of issue, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what a voice, Karen Carpenter. She was great. Wow. So it's always it's always been on. What about you? Well, no, I will say we did grow up with music in the household. Um, my mum liked music. She had, um, she'd seen Frank Sinatra a few times, actually. Um, but to me, it was sort of around that era you sang earlier on about Slade. The mm. first song I really can remember seeing on Top of the Pops and blowing me away when I was literally. An embryo mm. was T Rex and get it on. Oh yeah, good. Uh, Mark Bolan, um, who, who for those who know uh, T Rex and he actually died unfortunately not that long, far mm. away from here in Barnes. Uh, so T Rex and got into sort of um, the glam rock era, just listening to that punk. But I mean, I was a bit too young for punk rock. That came sort of a little bit later for me. I love the Sex Pistols and that kind of thing. But I've always looked at. I mean, much I like oh, good old hits and that. I've always been throughout my life a little bit on the alternative side of music. Mm. You know, I really like indie music and all that kind of thing. But when you were young, what was when, well? You, if you talk you about know. sort of your formative years, you talk about teenage years now. Uh, up to the, sort of like the age of nine. I can't say I'm more into soundtracks, movie soundtracks, okay. and um, Star Wars soundtrack, original Star Wars soundtrack. Mm. Although I was eleven when that came out, that was that blew me away. Mm. The, that whole orchestra scores um, but music I really got into music about 81, 82 when I got my first white page you know, packet I remember the very first album I bought actually 
Yeah, I, I wouldn't think it's pretty sure I'd be really trendy here. It ain't. The very first album I bought was the second, was it the second year, the second Spandau Ballet album. Cool. With Instinction on them. Do you remember that shop that used to be, I think it was called Record Rendezvous, and they had a little music booth. It was in... No. It was, uh, and literally, you could go in there, and it was like soundproof, and you could listen to it. You say, "I don't want to hear this song," and they'd go in there and you play it. It was brilliant. I think for me, when I got to about really sort of early ten, eleven, twelve, probably you know, every Sunday evening with the old record, you oh. know, the tape recorder. Mum, don't come in. I'm don't recording. Come in. Oh, we all, right? who did that? Who did that in the seventies? Yeah, you know, literally, I. That was really important. But I guess I really liked the jam. It mm-hmm. was when I got into being a mod. Believe it Are or you not. a mod? I was a mod, yeah. And um, I loved... A, f- a lot of friends I mixed with at the time were all very much into that. Me- my brother disowned me completely at the time. Why? Because he was a, a rocker. And the two don't mix. And uh, But that was the 60s, though. Well, no, it's still going on in the 70s. Remember when Quadrophena... Oh yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's but the Cotter thing was still set in the sixties. Was supposed to be set in the yeah. sixties, but the movie came but, out. Oh boy! Yeah, you know it was it was. So I really loved Paul Weller, and you know I loved um, you know the the jam, but also Same like here. the specials and madness. I started following, and, I started following Terry Hall on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. He's great. Oh, the specials! I think one of the best bands mm-hmm. ever. Yeah. And also like you know, um, I love a bit of ska and reggae. I yeah, me too. More ska actually for me than reggae. But then. It went to New Romantic. Right, that's where I, I that's where I come in. And I've got Adam Ant, uh, Duran Duran, Spandau Ballet, you know, Depeche Mode. Well, I wasn't work, quite wham. a New Romantic. I thought they used to call Futurist. Ah. Oh. My friend Heather, she actually went to the, the when she, when New Romantic really exploded. She went to the mm. Splits Club and all that kind of mm-hmm. thing. Uh, she remembers that quite well. But to me, yeah, New Romantic was a little bit. No, I was into Soft Cell, Visage, all that kind of thing. That really was the period when I really got into music big mm. time. It lasted, that lasted about four or five years. Still look back on that time and love that, that kind of electronic music. I've always loved electronic music. You know, Gary Newman, all that kind of thing. Um, and then, ah, oh, Bauhaus. Oh, this is good. And got really in sort of, sort of the gothic scene. Mm. So a bit gothic, Susie and the Banshees. Um, Bauhaus, as I say. But that's going sort of later. later no, on, so we're it? talking 84, 85. 84, 85 yeah, 85. Yeah. That's when I sort of took mm. a, a, bit of a, a bit of a curve, really. Mm. And really got in sort of alternative music, which I still am to this day. See, I, I, when you talk about songs that you remember that stick out, obviously I was talking about Lena Zambaroni that stuck out, and Crazy Horses was the one from the or from the from the uh, the Osmonds. But then when they I go, finished the show with that number, when um, that was such a great noise when they do mm. the horse, um, the, the, the noise of the horse. But when I remember the jam, what song would I pick from the jam? There are just so many. News of the world. Um, but for me, one of my favourite songs, although I absolutely love Town Called Malice and A Bitterest Pill, is actually Precious, which was on the other side of A Town yes, Called it was, Malice. Yes, yeah. And I love to drive to that song still. Um, and I also stand and deliver, you know, Adam Ant and... Um, still going strong, old Adam Ant. Prince Charming. I remember my brother going out dressed up as Adam Ant. He looked just like Prince Charming. He looked amazing. He had, down to the finest detail, it was it was fantastic so and then you know and my favorite duran song would be so difficult to pick but it would be something like wild boys i think and hungry like the wolf um so those are the songs that i remember in that sort of years of my life that that oh yeah and einstein a go-go which is still one of my favorites i loved that and um it, it just like with cars with Gary Newman, it was such a great sound when it came out. Mm. I mean, people people still say the eighties, even though they laugh about the dress sense and all that. One of the greatest eras for music. Yeah, I mean, I'm, although I love the eighties, I actually more nineties person, bizarrely enough. Mm. Yeah, but eighties, yeah, but eighties was brilliant. You know, mm. to me, the eighties produced the greatest band in the in the world, in my personal opinion, mm-hmm. the Stone Roses. But that's 89. I think that's in the 80s, 89. But we still got to come to that middle 80s when you had Madonna come onto the scene. But I wasn't really... I'm more in, really into the indie scene. I mean, I went to gigs, so many gigs. Mm. And I, around that time... I know, I know we're going to talk about mainstream stuff mm. here, but I wasn't really into the mainstream music. Never have been. 
Um, not not trying to be but cool she, or trendy, but I just Madonna, yeah, brilliant, but good but eyes. Loads of little girls suddenly went thank you to yeah. her because I mean, now we could wear our bra. What about Boy Giorgio? You know, a lot. yeah, I mean Culture Club. Yeah, you know, fantastic. That was quite an original sound. You think about it, that was mm. really quite an original sound. Culture Club. And what's the other one? Um, the other group at the time I was. The Duran Duran, Spandau Ballet, Duran Duran, uh, Wham. I um, mean, there's one other. I keep it's on the tip of my tongue. Um, the big band from the. Uh, It'll come to me. A oh, Human League. Human League. Yeah, yeah. I love Human League. Loved Human League. Phil Oakey. What a hair... Uh, you know, that hairstyle. Mm. And when yeah, he but, did Don't You Want Me, that is... That's it's interesting song. how times have changed. You know, back in the day, oh, oh, oh is he or isn't he Phil Oakey? Yeah. But now, well, he isn't, by the way. But, but he kind of went yeah, through yeah, both yeah, the ladies. Now, but, yeah, but then you think... You know, um, oh, it doesn't matter what, what the sexuality yeah. is. Who cares? Yeah. You know, which is, which is much better. Um... But yeah, Human League, fantastic. I, uh, I love all that. So going back to the electronic music, love it. Mm. Love it. And what about, um, because as I went into like 16, 17, 18, 19 year of life, soul came, you know, like uh, a lot of our early R&B, R&B and yeah. soul. And one of, the, one of the guys that I absolutely loved, which really brings back memories of my late teens was Alexander O'Neill. I knew that was going to say, I knew you were going to say Alexander. Why were you going to say that? Okay. Criticize. Yeah. If you were here tonight. I think of that, when I hear that song, that reminds me of one of my first jobs and the people we'd go out with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bit of the old R&B, or the jazz funk, they used to call it. Yeah. Jazz funk. I remember seeing him in concert, Alexander O'Neill, with the big bed. He'd bring out the big bed on stage and he'd pull up some lady from the audience mm. and he'd have his little silk bathrobe on and he'd be singing to you while he got you on the bed and there was roses it was just like it was great yeah I mean nowadays you look back and it's fucking cheesy yeah cheesy as hell but I also loved going back quickly Donna Summer of the 70s and um, I Feel Love is one of the greatest songs oh, ever written Georgia Maroda. Yeah. yeah and um, I just think that she she's gone now sadly yeah very sad I loved the, I did like that disco scene as mm-hmm. well you know, I love the disco yeah love yeah. the disco especially in the late 70s Earth Wind and Fire and Saturday all that Saturday Night Fever oh, when that that's a guilty out, that's a guilty pleasure is it that's done? a really is guilty really? pleasure I think that's one of the best produced albums ever yeah yeah and I mean for me like um, just hearing that song instantly you see the walk that him yeah. wearing him wearing the you know the the the, the trousers the white trousers mm. the jacket and the walk but for me like Alexander O'Neill and and going to clubs at that time in my life it was very much early R and B um, snap the power um, that's 1990 well it's just coming up up to yeah. that and then well can I just backtrack yeah, a little sure. bit yeah when I went to my first festival which was the Reading Festival '88 um, very indie scene and. In the background, I already knew who the band was. I knew some of their songs, obviously. But, but I kept this chap had it on loop the whole way near our campground. Where it was Led Zeppelin, the, the album Led Zeppelin too, and that really got me into Led Zeppelin because it's such yep. a great album. Yep. Going to my first uh, festival was an experience actually because all my t- my tyres went on my car, and I was we how we get home, yeah. Um, but yeah, that that was around that time. I'm really getting into indie scene. We got to mention the Acid House scene. Mm. I mean that that was just like where did that come from? This is a this is good stuff, you know. Yeah. And I think we're still seeing res, you know residuals of that even now today. Did you ever go to raves? Yeah, been to a few raves. See, I I never did. Yeah, I went to only probably went to two. Mm. I actually worked for a drug agency around promoting. Um, not that I had a drug problem or anything like that. Um, but in the late early nineties, it was a like volunteer thing. You go around, we'd go around raves, mm. giving people water and that kind. Of, it was like drugs awareness. Mm. We're not saying you do don't take drugs, yeah. but here's here's the information if you about do, drugs. Here's something here's to, some, yeah, we yeah. weren't saying don't take drugs at all. It was just saying here be aware of the safety act aspect of it. It was a really interesting charity. Um that was good. But yeah, um what but I'm still saying I like dance music, but I wasn't you know, really a still more an indie guy. And so when the Stone Roses mm. came out that sort of changed a lot, you know. Um so yeah, I reckon around that time and also two my two favourite bands of all time I really was into. I must have seen them twenty, thirty times over the years. Uh, was uh, The Mission and The Wonder Stuff, mm. two great indie bands, mm. which I, I still love to this day. Um, so, yeah, that, that was, you know, life-changing in a way. And also, like, at this time, because we're, we're talking about sort of a lot of British stuff, but I remember in 86 discovering Heart. I'm sorry. Um, you know, the <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. These Dreams. Yeah. And I remember, like, that thinking that song was just... I mean, it was... and. The final countdown, mm. you know, and stuff like that. In American big 
hair, mm. um, you know, uh, soft rock sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, never been a bit of soft rock fan. Kind I of loved it. Great that. tracks, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Great tracks. I mean, um, Journey with um, uh, Don't Stop Believing. Yeah. That's the ultimate bloody road trip song, yeah. you know. Um, I mean, obviously when Bon Jovi came, yeah. early Bon Jovi mm. came out, um, people were like, oh my God, yeah. you know. And another song that comes to mind at that time, sadly he's no longer with us, is um, Pete Burns and You Spin Me Round. Because that was such an amazing song yeah. when it came out. People were like... That was Doc Aitken and Woman, wasn't it, really? Yeah. It just, they took their, one of these songs, this re, I think that was their first Doc Aitken and Woman song that really went through the roof yeah yeah great track great track and it's now it's still seen as what well, you know what you know when you get the party and stuff like that so i think that those were the sort of musics that went through my early part of my life mm-hmm. so as we go into our 20s what what do you sort of feel like has influenced you in that sort of yeah era? well in the indie scene wonder stuff emission stone roses mm-hmm. all that kind of era a little bit of uh, the acid house scene um and in my twenties, then going to Oasis, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Uh, so real, it's a real. Sorry, there's a real indie thread, thread, thread going through here. So yeah, all that kind of music. What was, does that music make you feel? Well, it's like any music it makes you feel good. Yeah, but you like it. What does it? What does it? You're drawn to the indie music. Yeah. What does it make you feel? What does it bring out in you? Well, like any music, joy. Mm. Why? Well, you know, um, anything you like is going to bring you mm. joy, isn't it? You know, I think it, for me it's also like expression, like when you dance and you, you know, you're let, you're just away with, you know, you're so, away sorry, with music. So, d- you said sort of dance, dance, dance. Don't you dance, I don't darling? dance, darling? I have done it in clubs, but no. Have you no, really? Nobody in the world needs to see that. Did you dance? Well, you know, everyone else did. Yeah. You, I need to see that. You really don't. I really you do. Really I don't. really do need to see that. You don't see. Although I'm not a dad, dancing. you don't want to see a do dad dance. Do you have a camera? Was it on camera? No. We weren't vlogging back there. There was no internet. Damn it! I I would I would have paid money to see that. Really? Yeah. You shake your stuff yeah. on the dance floor. Um, <laughs> Mark grooving and moving. That. Grooving and moving. <laughs> um, so moving into the late eighties and early nineties. Yeah, darling. What? What? How? How were you then? What? That's interesting, isn't it? Because music for me became a little bit boring in the in the nineties. Ah, I've got. A PS to that. Um, and don't get me wrong, there was stuff I loved. But I think my... Um, I definitely loved 89 to 90, 91, 92. But after that, I mean, one song that comes to mind in that time period is What Is Love by Hadaway. Is it Hadaway? Yeah. That song brings back very good memories. And, um, you know, I, years later, it was still played at a nightclub that we frequented and it was brilliant. Um and um, Rhythm is a Dancer and all that kind of stuff great and tracks. Dirty Cash yeah great oh yeah yeah you know? Dirty Cash I want you Dirty um, Cash I need you yeah and I'll tell you another song that comes to mind it's a little bit further back but it could have be. do you remember uh, I Wonder If I Take You Home Lisa Lisa and Colt Jam yes another, another, another song so I think I was kind of into that but I can't say looking back that something really stood out for me, yeah. apart from Madonna, who I actually followed all the way through until she got to the last, what was it, Hung Up recently. Mm. After that, I've not followed her no. because I can't stand where she's gone. It's just not really my cup. My, my, I mean, I'm saying the reason great is not mm. my, my particular taste in music, you know. Yeah. It's interesting, actually, at the time of this recording, it would have gone by the time you see this, but I'm going down to Bognor Regis this weekend for the absolute 80s. I'm weekend, jealous. yeah. I know you're supposed to be coming. I was supposed to come with I you, um, but that'd be interesting. Saying, oh look, they have all these old people up on stage from the eighties doing their thing. Who did I see last time we were there? China Crisis. Um, uh, oh God, the people who did um, a couple of other ones. I've gone a blank now because I'm. Trying it's to very sad though that when you see people from your childhood playing, and they've either aged sadly not too well, unlike or us. they don't even sound no like it, and you're like. Like Rick Astley. We have Brother Beyond, that's it. Nathan, uh, Nathan, Nathan from Brother Beyond. He, oh, he looks good for you. He's, he does. He's still he still got amazing. it. He's still got it. But Simon Le Bon looks good. He, Duran Duran all seem to look really good. They, They're in their early he, 60s he looks now. really good. Um, Here but, thing, my girl I used to go out with years and years and years ago was best friends with Yasmin Le Bon. Oh. And she was with Yasmin when they first she started going out with Simon Le Bon. Because it's interesting with, with George Michael, I remember him 
uh, Shirley, who's married to Martin Kemp mm-hmm. from Spandau. Yes. Like it was George Michael, I think, that kind of got them two together and his music like when because now George Michael was doing his own stuff at that time and he's such a great singer you know I I still say he is because to me I don't even feel like he's gone but sadly I know he he has but his music is still so powerful George Michael I absolutely love Freedom 90 yeah love that song uh, Cowboys and Angels was one, was one I played in my car a hell of a lot in that time and praying for time because he refused to actually do a, a video for it you know mm. he really didn't want to be there so I think that George Michael probably comes back into that time period because he did that amazing and, and Michael Jackson obviously yeah yeah like, latter part of Michael mm. Jackson yes and Michael Jackson I love some a bit of old MJ what's your favourite um, I would say, um, I would say probably. Uh, oh God, black and white. I really like black and white. Little little in with old um, bloke yeah. from Circle Trent on guitar, mm. Slash on the guitar, uh, uh, and um, I really like just the the song Thriller. I really like Thriller. I remember begging my mum to let me stay up and watch Thriller at midnight, and she was like, "Well, how bad is it going to be?" And I'm like, I don't know. We're directed by John it. Landis, yeah. And then we had the video recorder waiting to go, because you know, and we, I was mesmerised by that. Mm. And you can still watch it now, and it hasn't aged. No. Oh, his jumpsuits, his jumpsuits. Jump well, yeah, but it's kind of set in a time when he comes out of the cinema. Like, what decade is that? Yeah, in? it was such a great uh, little. Video. That's what's interesting. When you go into the nineties, and I've, I was going to do a video about this. I've been thinking about this for quite a while recently. Styles and videos, uh, sorry, mm. styles in music sort of halted in the sort of early 90s. What I mean by that, yeah. especially in the indie scene, <clears throat> you could take a song from the early 90s, even where they look, put it now, and it wouldn't look out of place. No. And that's 30 years ago. Yeah. I find that very interesting. You could take something like Beck and Loser, which I absolutely love, you know, um, and put that now, it will still sound exactly the same. Mm. It'll say, oh, no one in blink an eyelid. Um, I find that very interesting. I, I think there's some great music now as well still influences me. I love Sam Fender. Mm. 17 Going Under, I think it's a modern classic. Um, I really like Wolf Alice. I love Kasabian. Um, so I think some great music around at the, mo- at the moment. I was in the attic the other day just digging out some stuff and I found my old um, LPs, ones that I'd kept. And I, I'm so gutted that I gave up all my LPs, my vinyl. Yeah, some of that to throw away and, um, got damp I, on them. I, I am absolutely gutted I gave, gave so many away. But I found some of my favourites that I'd kept and one of them was uh, Thriller. Uh, one was um, uh, Duran Duran. It's the Rio. Is it Rio album? Yeah, Rio album. Um, and I also had uh, the original Take on Me uh, by Aha. With the with all, as you open it up, it's got the whole story, you know. And but I had all the Madonna stuff because she was obviously a massive influence. And I collected all the picture discs. Do you remember like getting the picture? Discs? I've got loads. You have loads of them. Yeah, yeah. And I kept. I got them. Uh, yeah, Sweet Dreams by Eurythmics on picture discs. Surprisingly, not worth a lot of money, though. Not worth but hardly anything. My mum's got the Beatles album that's white. You what, know, original? The, well, she's got, I think she has someone at the, one of the white, with the white. I swear she has, because she, she's got all these albums, and she went from That must be worth a small fortune. Well, when she can find it. But I know we had it, because I saw it as a child, that she was really into the Beatles. And people, you know, people don't realise. I actually got into Paul McCartney. But they had such an influence on so many artists, like Oasis, for you know. Mm. But Paul McCartney, I loved it. I loved his work. Um, I mean, if I had to pick a Beatles song, and that would be hard, which one I would really love? I'm going to be a bit of an obvious one, but I just love Hey Jude. Yeah. This is a crowd pleaser. Probably mine would be... Um, oh, that's hard, but... I'd probably Love Me Do and Twist and Shout. Twist and Shout. Because... I like their later stuff, because when they got into the psychedelic mm. phase... And because in my in my family, one artist has always been a favourite, and that's Elvis, Elvis Presley. Um, what about your family? Did they like him? Uh, yeah, I think so. I've same, I come from family, not no, having a go with my family, just weren't really that music, into music, you know. Mm. I mean, I know my mum liked people like uh, Glenn Campbell, which I think is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and um, I'll say Sinatra. Um, and I've got his face in front of me, and I can't remember what his name is. That's really bad. Uh, but yes, a few of those sort of country country artists from the seventies. And 70s. that's weird because as I've got older, 
and obviously because I lived abroad, so I think I got that influence. I love country music. I am used to slag it off to the... But now I'm warming to it. I love oh, blues. No. I love blues love music. Love blues. Yeah, love but blues. country music, yeah. I've sort of come round to... When I went to Grand Old Opry a couple of years yeah. ago... Oh, I'm so jealous yeah. you did. Uh, I only went outside. We were on a road trip. But that was like, oh, okay, we're in Nashville, we're in Tennessee, you know. It was, it was, yeah, it sort of influenced I, me a bit. I find the music I'm, I'm influenced by now because there seemed to be a lull in the 90s going in. You know, I don't really remember any sort of song that really sticks out no. a lot. Um, yeah, I think it's true to say we're not into music as much as we used to be. Although I have to say, I have to admit to actually seeing Shaken Stevens in concert, which I have to say was, I actually met him as well. And I saw Krista Burr. I'm so sorry. Oh, a lady in red. Yeah. Not the most friendliest of people. Oh, someone said... I saw a thread about that recently. About Someone said about Krista Burr, and he said he's not the most... Yeah. He's not friendly. Um, and I met. I saw Whitney Houston in, in concert. Never, never did an encore. But someone who was amazing, and I, he's still one of my favourites, is Elton John. His music from the 70s mm. all the way go. I'm still standing... Absolutely yeah, classic. 1983. That's a weird thing. I've got a very good recall for dates. Someone gives me a date of a of a movie or a song. I can tell you what year it was. Mm. Really weird. I mean, look at. I mean, looking at Elton, he went through such a change of image and song yeah. to where he is now. Because mm. Pinball Wizard, classic. I mean, you know, you're more mainstream music, and mm. I'll be more alternative sort of, music. I was, but I, I was sort of the mod stuff yeah. and and scar on that lot. But you're you're. You and I have always been different flavours when it yeah. comes to music. Yeah. And yet when I get in the car, you're listening to classical. I have classic FM one. The reason for that is I've still got the old... Because my car is so old, I can't put anything digital in there. It just doesn't work. Uh, so I have to have the old radio cassette radio thing. So it has, I tune into classic FM and I like classical music. So. But now, do you find that as you're getting older classical music soundtrack music it's, it's something that we're drawn to no because I was into soundtrack music for when I was 10 years old for me I definitely got in more into classical yeah. and soundtrack um, no I've always liked it it's no, it's no I mean you know 1979 Star Trek the motion picture soundtrack Star Wars soundtracks you know I was playing mm. them just as much as I was playing you know soft cell so yeah it's, 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 so if you had to pick I'm going to use the magic words five Top five songs. Impossible. Because the reason it's impossible is because your mood changes. Yeah. So it's impossible to answer. Because my, it, my taste now, although it's still, there will be, if I change my mind, there might still be my favourite songs, but I might have other favourite songs, so it's very hard to say. I can't do that. Can you? Yes, I can. Yeah. And, and it would we'll be... Get her. She can do it. I can't. It would be Queen, who wants to live forever. Oh, from Highlander. Absolutely. That is one song that just I adore. Um, that, would... that vocal when he reaches that apex. Yeah. Oh, we love my star. Oh my goodness. He's. I mean, Freddie Mercury. I mean, as you know, is one of my favourites. But the the Queen are wonderful, and um, you only have to hear that, do, 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 mm. and you know, Queen are really you know. good. Even you, Queen like Abba, everyone secretly loves them. They do. You know. But do would you? This is that thing because people that didn't know Freddie Mercury, obviously that you know he. What, what I mean by that is that the guy Adam Lambert, yes. who now is it, you, have you listened to yeah, him? I've seen some, yeah, I've seen some. He's a fantastic voice. He's, He's actually probably a better singer. Do you think so? Yeah, in, in, view, in view of technique. Mm. But Freddie, had, Freddie obviously is a great singer as well. Of course he is. Voice but is it just, there's something about Freddie, something about it. He's a showman. I think with, yeah, with Adam Lambert, oh wait, wonderful voice. I'm not really into singers, really. I'm more into bands. I, I'd rather someone, you know, I'm more... I'm more Foo Fighters than I will be Queen, you know. Mm. Um, I love Foo Fighters, by the way, as well. Um, but Queen I love as well. Um, but Anna Lambert, he's harmonising. Mm. That's why I'm not a big fan of, rock, of uh, what I call jukebox, musical, jukebox musicals. Don't you miss those days of When you're harmonising rock though. songs. It just doesn't, to me, it doesn't work. Didn't you miss the days of going into a pub and you had the jukebox? And you yeah. Could just put, they didn't have them anymore. No, like everyone's like that on their phone. Music's, yeah. music's changed because when we... This is going to sound like we're so old. We appreciated it because it's like, going to save up the money, we're going to go and get the LP, we're going to come at home, and we had to get the little plastic the little plastic cover to put the LP in so you didn't, you know... Gatefold sleeves. I mean, this is, you're going to love this one, but I actually bought Clannad. 
you know, now in, uh, no, Clannad. Legend. Rob, Robin. Yeah, Robin, Robin the, the Hood. From Robin the Hood. Listen, yeah. I still have that album. So do I. With, and that's one of my favourites. Actually, that's one of my favourite albums of all time as well. Clannad Legend from the Robin the Sherwood soundtrack. And I still listen to today and the music is still Robin, as powerful today. Robin the Hooded Man. Yeah. Because not a connection you've got with, with Robin and Sherwood. I do have a connection. With a certain Robin Hood. With a certain Robin Hood, I do. Second one. But, I'll uh, let you work that one out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry if you're watching, Mr. Like, Mr. Connery. Um, I'm almost going as red as my top, though. Yes, you are. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, darling. But, uh, but that was a great album. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. Um, and when they did The Hearn, and you hear that music, that haunting voice of uh, Marie Brennan... It's just like, mm. oh my God. You know, as a kid, I was transfixed. Nothing is forgotten. Nothing is ever forgotten. Nothing is ever, ever forgot, forgotten. forgotten. Um, I'm a leaf driven by the wind. Yes. I mean, we could do a whole, We need to do a show on that, you know. Yes. Because well, we, it's one of our favourite programmes. Robin of Sherwood, it? yes. That and Doctor Who, yeah. Um, so as you're going into this time now mm-hmm. of your life, what's what are you sort of listening to now? Um, a lot of uh, indie, um, still. Uh, a lot of classic songs from the 90s on my Spotify playlist, classical soundtracks, uh, all real all sorts, a real all mm-hmm. sorts. Um, one of my favourite bands, Dead Can Dance, which I've ho- hopefully some people have heard of, Dead Can Dance, there's nothing like them anywhere. Um, so however the mood's taking me, really, mm-hmm. however the mood takes me. Um, say a little bit of ska, mm-hmm. do you like a bit of ska? Um, I like a lot of folk, real into folk music. Do you like your music loud? I think I'm really boring. The only thing that, that should be loud is music. Yeah. But I'm generally quite quiet. Like, well, like, I like being quiet. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I like a bit of heavy metal occasion. I love Iron yeah. Maiden, you know. Um, but yeah, music should be loud. Yeah. Um, for me, like, I was looking on my top 25 songs that I play, and um, a lot of them are soundtrack. Mm. And um, for instance, um, I've got The Shepherd's Boy from Doctor Who which the music from that I absolutely adore. And Blade Runner soundtrack oh, is on there. We lost Vangelis recently, didn't we? Yeah. And also the Basic Instinct um, soundtrack. soundtrack. But then I've also got other songs on there, which, you know, um, Ellie Goulding, which is, uh, you know, I love that. So I think when I went through my top 25, I was like, oh my God, I play these all the time because it's it's comforting. Yeah. And it brings you different mm. moods out, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, of course it does. Yeah, yeah. Like the Bond soundtracks, you know. Yeah. So, guys, what's yours? What's, how do you feel? How, what kind of... Has there any been a specific band or music that's really influenced your life? And what songs? Yeah, or does it change as we get older? Because, say, our moods, our tastes and moods yeah. change. You don't not stop liking a certain song, but you might think you might come back to it. I mean, for instance, I remember my parents playing Glenn Miller a lot, and that's wonderful yeah. when you listen to the music back then. So what era, what eras are you drawn to? Mm. And, and why? What memories do they bring back? Yeah. I, I remember just very briefly when my aunt died, I went to, obviously at the funeral, they played um, Glenn Miller and it was, the, oh, I can't remember now, it's the, it's, the, it's the most famous one he does. <laughs> the slower one. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not really up on Glenn yeah, Miller. But, but literally the whole people there were transfixed back to that time of, you know, and this is the thing, is it, it is the soundtrack to our lives. So what era are you drawn to the most because for me i'd probably go back to the 80s i would say 90s yeah 90s um i thought music was just really good then would you go back to the 90s as you are now if you could why would i want to go back to to see all that stuff but see it through older appreciative eyes um now i've got my it's up here I would go back in a yeah. heartbeat. Yeah, would you? I would be back in the eighties, baby. Eighty six, and I know my sister went to see Madonna. Yeah, I want to go back to the eighties. No, nineties. Oh, uh, yeah, I want to see the pictures of you in the eighties. You, you really don't. I really do. Okay. I think we need that. I think Mark needs to show us, don't you, an eighty picture? Okay, okay. Well, as, I'm, as I'm near, near the point where I have my hair in a ponytail again, the first time I had my hair in a ponytail was in 1996. Is it really? Yeah, so that's nearly getting there, nearly getting there. So I have, I've had long hair for quite a while, so yes, I'll... If you, need, if you want to see a picture of Mark and I in the 80s and the 90s, put it in the comments and we'll oblige. I've got plenty of pictures I can dig out. So yes, so uh, thank you. That was a really nice chat there, wasn't it? It was very enjoyable. I've enjoyed it. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please like, subscribe and... Uh, 
leave your comment as the question is what what influenced you what songs or music influenced you in your in your yeah. life journey yeah i like that phrase life journey i like life that journey it's very good one. Yes.